And here we are. Good to do some quick upgrading in that. Oh, hello again, Gavin. The healing church and the blood ministers who belong to it were once guardians of the hunters in the times of the hunter. Could you talk any slower? But anyway, I am actually going to be doing that because there is a very, very special badge that I want. And, um. What's gonna be up there? Ooh, actually, I need. Anyway, thinking aloud. Um. Because there is a badge I want. Now, what do bads badges do? They are. Oh, this is the one we got from the Cleric Beast. Ludwig was the first of many healing church hunters to come, many of whom were clerics. As it was, clerics transformed into blah 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 blah. What these do is they give you access to certain things in the Insight and the Blood Echo Shop. I don't want any of those. What I do want. Probably st oh yeah, I was going to level, wasn't I? Herp the derp. I was going to do some leveling. Welcome, Udi. Very well, Magnus. Do, do, do. In fact, I need to make sure I have 16 strength for the weapon I'm going for. And most of you who've played this game probably already know what that weapon is going to be, just by the mention of 16 strength. Farewell, good mate. So, that's what I'm going to be doing. Right about now. Alrighty. So now this door is open, we have access to an entirely new area. Bloodstaff Beast is an optional fight, you don't have to do them if, uh, if you don't want to. You must have seen the Hunter Chief emblem in the shop. If you get that, you can open up the gates that block up the Cathedral Ward if you want. But it's basically 10,000 souls to skip a boss, and I, I generally just don't do it. Especially since getting access to this area is actually quite important indeed. It gives you access to a lot of things in New Game. In New Game Plus, fine I suppose, just get the damn Hunter Chief Emblem and get on with being the game. But if you want to go and collect things and see what you can get, it's a good idea as a hitbox there, to go and open up all the areas and beat all the bosses. Down that way is where I'm going to be going in a bit to open up the Cathedral Ward and get the first elemental gem you can pick up in the game. Oh, hello. This way, please. But above is the badge that I'm after. And there's a lot of dudes to get through before we can get access to that. That little head bomb. Okay. okay. Oh wow, that was half my health. I don't know what you're swinging out there, but I'm glad it's not me. And I think this is actually quite a powerful blood tinge gemstone in here as well. Yeah, blood tinge gemstone 2, which gives you quite a significant boost <laughs> over the one you find in Old Yarn.
If you're a bit sickened by all this R1 spam, so am I. But it's just so goddamn easy. Why even form any strategies when you can just R1 spam your way to victory? Oh, hello. Suddenly every gun in the house is trained on me. How much damage does my gunshots do? Actually, can I knock him off? Yes! <laughs> you can actually do that to Juro as well if you're fast enough and quick enough on the draw. You can knock him off the edge and it's, it's rather amusing. It takes age to fight. Nope. He's nearly dead though. <laughs> How did he manage that? Did he wheel himself off the edge? <laughs> it's very nice of him to do that, but... Confusing. Oh! Oh! Oh, I'm so glad that did not connect. <laughs> this way. Don't know if he actually follows you in here or not, but I generally don't want to fight him outside. If I can help him. Alright, he's, he's off. Oh, what's this? That's nice. The choir is a um, sort of a subdivision of um, of the healing church, and sort of the last remnants of Bergenworth, as it were. And you'll see a bit more of them and their shenanigans later on. But suffice to say, they are the de facto head of the church. You could say. No mercy for wheelchairs. Oh! Thank you. And that is why. Because they are assholes. And there is the badge I'm after. That way we cannot open yet. Because you need a key you get around the midpoint of the game. That's fine by me, because I have to work my way down. Not all the way down, but ooh, quite a bit of the way down. I'll be making a short stop as we head down, and you'll see exactly why. It is something quite interesting at the bottom, or near the bottom. If you don't know what this place is, and you're thinking, what the hell even is all this? Take a look at the ceiling in this place. Don't all these instruments of death look very similar, man? Uh, familiar? Especially all of the saw-related ones. This is used to be the center of the workshop. The hunters, as they used to be, were well, disbanded. They're, they were no more. A long, long time ago. Before the hunter's dream becomes a thing. And this is the remnant of their their existence. This is all that's left, as it were, with the exception of Gammon himself. The Old Hunters DLC helps to clarify a bit as to what happened to the uh, most of the other key players, like Ludwig and, uh, oddly enough, Lawrence as well. But no, of course, Lawrence not being a hunter. But this is what's left. It's a derelict, quite uh, non-health and safety compliant uh, workshop. And if you go down this way, you get access to... I do have to ask how the hell they got around in this place, even when it was in its prime, but it's isolated now by this little platform. And what is isolated? The origin of the dream. The abandoned old workshop. The workshop that German himself worked in. It's kind of fallen in a bit of disarray. This is the source for the geography of the hunter's dream. As you'll find later on in Bloodborne, most of the time anyway, not all the time, but most of the time, um, 
The layout of the nightmares to some extent is influenced by the hosts of the nightmares, as you'll see in the, the Nightmare of Mensis. And Gammon himself is around because he is hosting the Hunter's Dream. And it works around a similar premise. And I just picked up the doll clothes and didn't even look at them. Oh, so cute. Anyway, um... A discarded doll's hat. Likely a spare for dress-up. A deep love for the doll can be surmised by fine craftsmanship in this article, and the care with which it was kept. It borderlines on mania, and exudes a slight warmth. It's quite possibly the worst set in the game, um, defense-wise. Looks nice, though. <laughs> There's at least that. And it is definitely interesting from a, um, a story perspective. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Because I do love to talk about things, especially story-related things. This, we can't use just yet, but this is the first hunter tool we have picked up in the game, and I think the first one you can really get access to. The bone of an old hunter whose name is lost. It is said that he was an apprentice to old German. Apparently it's not a gendered pronoun in the original Japanese. And a practitioner of the art of quickening, a technique particular to the first hunters. It allows you to anime teleport around the place like some, nin some fantasy ninja. It's pretty, it's pretty decent. It's, it, it's alright. It's not really worth the cost, but it, it looks alright. It's good for um, certain fights where you really need the iframes. It is most appropriate that Hunter's carries of the torture are sustained by the dream with tease and old art from his remains. So yeah, that's emphasizing the age of back when Hunters were, well, operating through this workshop. Picked up a small hair roll. Which I think is a key item, I don't know. Yes, it is. It is. A small, very ordinary hair ornament. Although it has been lost for quite some time, one can still see signs of the care with which this tasteful ornament was once kept. Its colour would stand out most brilliantly against a head of greyish hair. Not strange, I don't think I know anybody who has grey hair of any description. Not anybody alive, anyway. An abandoned doll. So yes, this is the original doll. And if you see a finger twitch, don't worry. It's probably nothing. It's probably nothing. Not yet. In fact, I don't even need to, the lantern's here. And this bizarre thing! Just when you thought this was a gothic horror game, this fucker turns up. A great relic, also known as the Cord of the Eye. Every infant Great One has this precursor to the umbilical cord. Every Great One loses its child and then yearns for a surrogate. Yeah. Because that's, that's prolific in gothic horror, isn't it? Great Ones and Eldritch Beings. I wonder who's known for that sort of thing. There's no inside shop in the real workshop, unfortunately. It's just an old, derelict place that's no longer really around. Um, kept up. Still, it was a nice place to visit. So, that was uh, an insightful experience, one might say. No, 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 no. Yeah. So what do you do with a small hair ornament? What is the purpose of this? Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you desire? This is the purpose. What? What is this? I... I can't remember. Not a thing, only I feel a yearning, something I never felt before. What's happening to me? <gasps> Tell me, Hunter, could this be joy? 
<sighs> the doll is a very, very strange character. I think of her as sort of, um, I think the term would be a satellite character. Her meaning and her significance is related almost ex almost entirely to other characters, in this case to German and later to um, another character called Maria. But she's sort of the homage this game has to, at least I think anyway, the Frankenstein monster. She is a being created by, in this case, German. But unfortunately the creator has sort of got, well, has sort of... In the same way that Frankenstein goes to disown his, mon um, his creation, so too does German, for different reasons anyway. This, the doll was a labour of love for Gammon as an homage to a person he really loved, in this case, Maria. But the doll, the doll being alive in the Hunter's Dream is sort of a mockery of his, um, his old sort of, um, af af affections. And so he sees the doll after all this time as little more than just a toy, as it were. You can do, as far as he's concerned, you can do whatever the hell you want to him. He doesn't really care. Even even though she shows elements of emotion and such, he does not give a shit. He is long past giving a shit. So that's why the doll's significant. She's Frankenstein's monster in this story. And I think that makes her a bit a bit more sympathetic. A doll sheds neither blood nor tears, unless its nature remains unknown. Bing! And it gives you this. Which is a droplet gemstone, which we have not seen yet because I haven't used the red brooch, and there's a, very, there's a reason for that. Crafted from a shining silver dull tear, this blood gem is a quiet but unfaltering friend. That continually restores HP, the life essence of a hunter. Perhaps the doll's creator had wished for just such a friend, albeit in vain. Strange, but there you go, it's, it's a blood gem. You can use it if you want, it's not that great, but... It's a thing. I, however, am quite a fan of damage. So I'll be using the blood tinge gemstone instead. And now we can buy fire paper because I think of the Radiant Sword Hunter badge. So I'm going to go and get about five. And as you see that little meter there, that's my beast hood. That goes um, up the less insight I have and down the more I have, so on and so forth. Insight also affects frenzy resist. There's a lot of little tidbits which will become relevant um, at later points when I discuss them. Why I went to all that trouble is because I want this weapon. This weapon right here, Ludwig's Holy Blade. Unfortunately, I don't happen to have a spare 20k souls on me. Let's see how much I can get from these. Intense soul popping action! That is not nearly enough. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of farming, which I will most certainly be cutting out of this video. And soon enough, I'll be back with that weapon. See you around. And there we have it. Weapon acquired. This is Ludwig's Holy Blade. Which pretty much everyone in Bloodborne has probably used at least once. The reason I want it, however, is because that's a very juicy arcade scaling. And one that becomes A later on. But before I can do that, I need to go down to the bottom of that area I showed in the in the um at the bottom or nearby the the workshop. So it's a quick rush back through the area we went through before.
back here. This time we're not going to uh, the old town of Germanland. We are instead heading right down to the lower cathedral ward. It's quite low. It's quite low down. Ooh. Oh, damn it. There's a messenger top hat over there if you want to know what that is. Ding. You don't want to, as much as you can survive the drop down here, you don't want to immediately go down. And you want definitely want to take your time. Don't r go into the barrels because there's that guy over there. He's having a nice nap. Let's not, uh, let's not disturb his rest quite just yet. He does snore loudly though. God, hear him from a mile away. Ah, oh, crap, it might have taken too long. Nope. Nope. And he's no more. Now, what did I just get? Well, I haven't shown off these yet, but these are runes. So they are basically the equivalent of rings in this game. So this one increases my max files. And this one boosts um, transformation, which is basically how the beasthood thing works, like how it raises your uh, your attack. Uh, it, it doesn't transform you into a beast, if that's what you're wondering. You have to get a very specific rune for that, that's in the DLC. Bit disappointing, but eh, what can you do? Anyway, this is what I'm down here for. And I'll be honest, I don't know this area all that well. I just know it could be a real... Real pain, despite how small it is. <laughs> now, Curtis, a knight of Denmark, his stand friend. <laughs> Outstanding. Out fucking standing. So I want to head down this way, ideally, because it gets me off the street. And in the street are a bunch of ugly fuckers. Ugly fuckers, who would rather be dead? And we picked up some sweaty coal clothes, which we apparently stripped right off a corpse. Fucking dogs. You see Mr. Sackman over there? Don't want to deal with him just yet. If you go down that way, and up that lift, that's what gets you access to the rest of the Cathedral Ward. And I'll be doing that in a moment, just not right now. <laughs> okay, so about Mr. Bagman. Mr. Bagman will become very handy later, but right now I just want him dead. Ideally, he's kind of in the way. So this is how you ideally deal with Mr. Bagman, so watch me fuck it up. Oh, there's, oh fuck, there's another patrol. He's out quickly! And you'll see why, because... I'm Okay, so let's try that again. This time remembering that there is two patrols instead of just one. Now oh, look, more pebbles. Because I need those. I need those in my life. Just moving around so much. Actually, I could... <laughs> Saying that, I could have used the pebbles to uh, distract them without potentially aggravating the... Mr. Sackman just pop in there. That was weird. Okay, one. There we go. There's two patrols. 
shots, right? I definitely killed one before there was one fighting me when the, I was attacking the sack man. Definitely was. Yeah, there they are. That one's coming around anyway. Okay, now to focus on the back man again. And this time not die to him when he's just by himself. That'd be ideal. He also happens to have my blood echo, so that's... That's always useful. So as you could probably guess, the best strat for dealing with this guy is just to backstab him all the time. Because he has a little charge up when he gets to a certain amount of health, that you take advantage of. Now, as I said before, I do not know my way around that well. I'm looking for an alcove where there's a fire gem. I think it's down this way. Unfortunately, it's guarded by one of the most annoying enemies in the goddamn game. And hopefully you won't see why that's the case, because I will murder him. Oh, shit. Please, just die. Thank you. Those guys have a very nasty grab. A very nasty grab indeed. Anyway, this was what I was after. It's actually a pretty solid gem. But this is how we're going to make Arcane work. I mentioned before that in order to get weapons like... Uh, this one to scale with arcane, as you can see in the attribute bonus, you need to put in an elemental gem. Now, this is a waning slot, so it will only fit into the Ludwig's weapon, not the threaded cane. Fortunately, it's not fully upgraded enough for that, so I'll have to do some more farming in order to get this up to scratch. More and more busy work. But, Mr. Sackman, who I just uh, horribly, horribly murdered before, is how I'm going to do that. And you'll see in a moment. In fact, this will probably be close to where I end the the set. Because it's already taken a hell of a lot of time, and it's going to take a lot of editing when I'm done as well. But much has been accomplished in the setup of this character, and it's all very important stuff. And that's a shortcut that I do not want to take, because I haven't opened a gate yet. So. Whereas normally with this door you could just open up, open it up with the Hunter Chief Emblem. If you don't have that, you fight... Oh yeah, sorry. Though I was expecting my character to just haul up the entire gate with her hands. No, there's a lever. And look, a wooden shield. I bet that'll be incredibly useful. Now, we can start opening up the areas. The upper area which leads to the next boss needed for main game progression, as well as some side enemies. Or some side areas, I should say. Now that I've gone and done that, I don't need to go to the lower area anymore, and this this is the, the cathedral, by the way. Let's show how strong the sack men can really be.
Ouch. And so we are whisked away to Yahagu. Yeah. So this is an interesting turn of events. Oh, by the way, as great as the Sackmen are at whacking your face in two pieces and uh, completely obliterating you, they fail to understand that in order to keep you in, they need to lock the door. But what can you do? What can you do? That's just saying, uh, there's some sinister shit going on, and you should probably try and uncover it. Which I think we grasp by this point. Those notes are a very strange addition to the game. Now, before I go on and end the set, really, because I'll be doing lots and lots of farming for upgrade material, the reason I want to um, get this area accessed now is because. There's some good stuff to get early on, and it's the early farm. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, this is a good farming spot for upgrade material, not just bloodstone shards, but twin bloodstone shards, needed to access the third gem slot for this weapon, in order to make it arcane. What you just heard there was another NPC. Guten Tag. Oh, by your God, the healing church. You've got to save me. Oh, thank you, dear saint. I have no words to express my relief. You can take this at least. Yeah, I'm totally here to save you. I I totally wasn't whisked away here. Please not to any member of the church like you. Oh, thank you so much, dear gods. If you're sitting there wondering, what the hell? I shouldn't say that for me. Um, if you don't wear a church garb, which is um the standard stuff as well as Gascoigne's garb, for he was a member of the church, she will basically assume you're one of the kidnappers or something. She's she, she's a bit dense like that. But anyway, um, this is one of the NPCs where you can send either to... Oh yeah, I haven't cleared that up yet. Um, I'll probably do that next set, but in any case, you can send NPCs away to certain areas, and of course we have, um, we've heard that Erden Chapel is a rather nice safe place. So, I will be sending her there. Thank you so much. I was seized on the street by the hulking brute in the cathedral ward and locked up here. There were many others, but they've been taken away. And I've heard moans echoing in the distance ever since. Sounds wonderful. So, the hunt is on tonight. And the streets are perilous and every door will be shut tight. Perhaps it isn't my place to ask, but do you know somewhere that might take me in? Indeed, I do. Oh, thank you so much. I'll set out as soon as I can. I pray for success in your hunt. Kind hunter. Quick question to ask. If she's been kidnapped and contained here, First off, there aren't any guards around, so nobody's really paying any attention to what she does. How the hell does she get out of this village by herself, considering she's not a hunter, and she can't just access the hunter's dream like we can? How the hell does she get out without being fucking face-planted by one of the bagmen? 
It's just, it's just assumed that she makes her way to Urban Chapel or wherever, and she's totally fine. It's, uh, it's, it's for convenience purposes, so you don't have to like escort a, a character or whatever, but it's still just bizarre. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now, I was actually, this is my cell, I don't want to be back in here. I need to go up to this spot. There is a boss in this area that I will be fighting probably next time. I what the hell? I'll probably be fighting him next time because... Ooh, 20 millstone shards. Because I need time to set up this uh, weapon. And also because I don't want to do Vicar Amelia straight away, who is the next main game progression boss. Bing! Oh yeah, that's totally very gothic. That's not weirdly Lovecraftian-esque at all, no. No. Okay. So. Next time I come back, I'll have this weapon prepped up and ready for uh, some arcane goodiness. And we'll be uh, fighting some more bosses. Sorry, it has been uh, pretty much just setting up um, and opening up some areas, but that's how it is for quite a bit of it. I'll be fighting a lot of the bosses I've now uh, got myself access to in the next set. So, until then, farewell.